Hello friends, this is uh, Pastor John Wesley from Christ Worship Center. I'm so glad to see you all through this video. Um, it's my pleasure and honor to greet you all in the name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. We get uh, a lot of emails from people around the world inquiring uh, about uh, how to pray in God's presence. In this video, I really want to encourage you uh, to know certain things about prayer. Some people say, I want to be a prayer warrior. I long to grow a deeper prayer life. But I have a secret struggle with uh, boredom. I know prayer carries power and changes lives. But when I sit down to pray, I find it too hard to focus on God. There will be some distractions and diversions. Even after a couple of minutes I start to pray, my mind travels back to the worldly things and wanders to my to-do list and sometimes I fall asleep. Dear friends, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3, Call to me and I will answer you. We have a promise that He hears us. In the same book of Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 12, the word of God says, you will call on me and uh, come and pray to me, I will listen to you. Through the pages of our Bibles, we see examples of men who prayed in God's presence. Even Jesus, our loving Savior, prayed. But now, I would like to encourage all of you to have a strong prayer life, which helps to retain a wonderful relationship with God. The first thing that we need to understand, in order to have a strong prayer life, you need to pray straightforwardly. We might think that we have to pray passionate and uh, persuasive words for God to hear us, but in reality, He listens even to our shortest prayers also. I'm not against to the long prayers, but whatever you do, do it with a heart of integrity. Martin Luther, one of the influential people in Christian history says, the fewer the words, the better the prayer. Isn't it a comforting message? We can talk to God in everyday language, just like we talk to our friend. We don't have to pray too long. God delights in a simple word of praise, like, Lord, I love you. He treasures the anguished prayer of a mother when she calls, heal my child. He answers the simplest request, Lord, give me strength for today. I really trust you and depend on you rather than my own self and my wisdom. He will not only hear your prayer, but also gives you answer in the right time. And the second fact, pray by claiming God's promises. We will never enjoy one-sided conversation with anybody who talk to us continually without listening. We do the same thing to God when we pray without reading the Bible, His eternal letter of love and wisdom to each one of us on earth. Reading the scripture helps us to get to know God. It brings life to our prayers. If you want to have a more effective conversation with God, read scripture every day and you can boldly claim God's exceeding and abundant promises written in the Bible just for you. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And the Bible says, the one who watches over Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. Read the Gospels to pray over a verse that strikes you, asking God to work the truth into your heart. Let the words of Paul's letter give you specific prayer requests for yourself and for the people around you. Thirdly, make prayer an integral part of your day. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses 16 and 17, rejoice always and pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Some say, is it really possible to pray without ceasing? Yes. As a man of God, I would like to suggest you to start and end your day with a prayer. Lift up short prayers to God as often as you can throughout your day. Pray over your schedules. Ask God to help you 
with your to-do list. When you hear a troubling news report, lift the situation up to the hands of God. The word of God says, ask and it shall be given unto you. So say a prayer for your spouse and for your children so often. Pray for the person you are talking to. Pray for the leaders and pray for the people that you interact every day. And pray for your church leaders and pastors also. And fourthly, pray expectantly. Prayer becomes a lifeless exercise when we are not looking for answers. Jesus invites us to expect God to work in our lives. How much more expecting prayer becomes when we keep our eyes open to watch for God's answers. Sometimes many answers be missed because we don't really expect God to respond. The word of God says in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. William Carey, a great missionary in India, once said, Expect great things from the Lord and attempt great things for Him. So dear friends, if you have wasted all these years without praying unto God, this is the time to kneel down in His presence and pray earnestly. Your loving Savior, who died for you on the cross of Calvary and rose again from the dead, will help you out in every way. God bless you.